There was one major event that happened in the 19th century that sort of soured the church's opinion when it came to extraterrestrial life. And that event uh, sort of became what it was going to be because of certain things in the 20th century. So in the 19th and 20th century, there were a few things that happened that really sort of account for the present suspicion or fear uh, of many in the church toward the whole question of extraterrestrial life. In the 19th century, the key event was the advent of Darwinism. Of course, Darwin published The Origin of Species in 1859, and that ushered in this new thing that we call evolution, uh, a whole different version of human origins. Now, Darwinism itself really doesn't have, or didn't have, I should say, any impact on the whole question of other worlds, but it was going to, because in the 20th century, the idea of life elsewhere in space, other worlds, began to sort of get married to Darwinism. That is, since people were predisposed to think that life on Earth was the result of random, directionless evolution, the thinking you know, went in the direction of, well, if we find life somewhere else, then life evolved somewhere else just like it did here. And so the pursuit of extraterrestrial life, or at least evidence for it, began to be viewed by some in the scientific community as a means by which we would sort of prove evolution and disprove creationism altogether once and for, once and for all. You know. uh, again, this thinking doesn't really have to be that way. Uh, we could look at this and say, well, that's kind of a non sequitur to, to, to frame the question that way. And I would agree, it is. But that is nevertheless the way it gets talked about. You could watch any sort of subject, uh, any sort of special on TV today about extraterrestrial life, and invariably, evolution will be part of the discussion because of this assumption. So the advent of Darwinism getting married to the question of are there other worlds really turned a lot of Christians off because Christians, at least many of them, didn't like Darwinism. They didn't like evolution. And so once you marry the two, the one is going to sour the other, and that's sort of what happened. Now, in the 20th century, there were a few other things that went on that today have really caused a lot of consternation, a lot of suspicion and fear among Christians when this subject comes up. In the 50s and the 60s, there's something that historians would call the contactee movement or the contactee phenomenon. And this is the era when you get lots of stories of people who claim to have seen not only things in the sky that they couldn't identify, again, UFOs, but also claiming to actually have been contacted by the occupants of those flying saucers, those UFOs, hence the contact team movement. And what really uh, sort of affected the way Christians uh, thought about the whole UFO, the whole uh, alien question in regard to the 50s and the 60s and the contact team movement was the messaging. The contactees, you know, were supposedly told by extraterrestrials that, you know, Jesus was one of them. Uh, lots of Christian ideas were hijacked and sort of reformulated into space talk. Uh, lots of New Age kind of thinking, at least that's the way we would term it today. And that really turned a lot of people off toward the idea of there being other worlds and extraterrestrial life. The alien abduction phenomenon that followed on the heels of the contactee phenomenon also did the same thing. People were actually physically harmed, or at least they alleged they had been harmed in these experiences where they were not only contacted by beings they thought were aliens, but the aliens would do all sorts of things to them. You know, some of them quite nasty. Uh, sexual violation, uh, lots of things that in other contexts you would think are very overtly demonic, uh, satanic even. Uh, this naturally led to, to Christians having a very low view of the whole question again, this whole phenomenon. And lastly, the whole ancient astronaut phenomenon uh, really deserves some attention here because not only was the idea sort of popular that there were aliens and they had contacted some people and maybe abducted people and did awful things to them, but now, according to ancient alien, ancient astronaut theory, they had been here in antiquity and they'd raised up our great religious leaders, you know, Muhammad and Jesus and Buddha, uh, these, they were either taught by aliens or were the offspring of aliens or were aliens or something like that. 
extraterrestrials had come here and built the pyramids. They'd given us Western civilization, even created humanity. All these narratives uh, became you know, sort of part of the popular discourse in the 70s through books like Chariots of the Gods uh, by Eric von Daniken or the works of Zechariah Sitchin. All of these things sort of run together. Contactee movement, alien abduction phenomenon, the ancient astronaut idea, uh, to really making Christians predisposed to rejecting the whole question of whether there could be other worlds. Again, something in the, in the Christian past that had been embraced. It was a consensus and it was positive. Now, it didn't help that there were notable non-Christians, non-Christian authors and writers that actually agreed with the new Christian suspicion. People like Jacques Vallée, who became the uh, the model or the touch point for the French uh, character, the French scientist in the movie Close Encounters, uh, wrote a number of books, again, very negative toward these alleged alien phenomena. John Keel was another one. Operation Trojan Horse was his famous book. Again, these were not Christians, but they were very opposed, thought the whole alien question was deeply sinister, and they even used words like demonic for it. All of that sort of reinforced a very negative uh, flavor in the church's mouth for this whole question of could there be other worlds. Now for myself, I would say that it just doesn't have to be this way. Uh, we have, uh, I think, to make a separation between the question of could there be other alien life forms out there and all of this other stuff, uh, what people allege to you know, have been contacted by aliens or abducted by aliens. I think the better way to process those things is not alien life, but some kind of malevolent, sinister, demonic, spiritual phenomenon that's happening. In other words, they're not extraterrestrials. We have no proof that they're extraterrestrials. And it's sort of muddying the waters. It's sort of ruining uh, what could be a good, interesting intellectual discussion that the church has had for centuries and even millennia. It's sort of poisoning that water because of the influence of uh, spiritual, sinister forces that have become part of the narrative and that are actually being used, or used themselves, the whole question of other worlds to create uh, sort of an acceptance of very anti-Christian and non-Christian thinking. Again, this wasn't the way it used to be. This sort of element, the sinister demonic element, was not part of the discussion in eras gone by. And so I think we need to parse the question a little bit better and sort of weed out the myths and sort of focus on, you know, where the discussion really ought to be. Now again, because of my background, I get asked questions about the theological implications of extraterrestrial life. You know, should we as Christians fear this idea? And part of the problem is the way, is the way this question, again, could there be extraterrestrials? Would we have a theological problem with how that question gets married to some other things in pop culture, and frankly, you know, within the wider orbit of the whole question of extraterrestrial life. I'm talking about things like the you know, alleged contactee situations where people think they've been contacted by aliens, and given lots of information that is frankly very anti-Christian. I'm also talking about alien abduction narratives. Again, whatever is happening to people or whatever they think is happening to them, again, is very sinister, very evil, very violent, and really you know, sort of undermines you know, any sort of confidence that the question of extraterrestrial life is something that Christians could be positive about. Because if these are aliens and aliens are doing all this nasty stuff, we don't want any part of that. It's obviously demonic and satanic. Well, my thinking is those are two actually different and competing things. The question of whether there could be aliens, whether there could be extraterrestrials, is a lot different than asking the question, hey, these stories about contact and these stories about abduction, are those aliens or something else? They're actually two distinct arenas. In fact, if you actually talk to people who are not Christians, they could be atheists or anything else, uh, but they're into UFO research, a lot of those people don't want anything to do with the contactee movement or the alien abduction movement. 
for the same reasons. They think it's ridiculous. They think that either people are imagining these things or inventing them. Some will, will say, well, maybe there are things like demons and this is what, what's happening here. But this, these are not aliens. These are not extraterrestrials. We should not mix these things up. But unfortunately, those things do get mixed. Now, again, what I want to focus on and what I try to focus on is, on the one hand, if you're talking about alien abduction, again, whatever people think that is, whatever it, it might be, either real or imaginary, that's very obviously sinister. It's very obviously dark because of what happens to people and the way it affects them in their life. If we're talking about ancient astronauts, again, I think the proposition of ancient aliens uh, being the explanation for things like the pyramids and the world's religions, I think it's patently absurd. As a text scholar, when it comes to the Bible especially, again, I can say it's absurd and an abuse of the biblical text. But those questions, as negative of a view as I have of them, for me, don't dictate how I think about the bigger question. Could there be? extraterrestrials somewhere out there? Is there a, an inherent theological problem with that? In principle, no. And I want to explain why I think that way, why we have a lot of illegitimate fears when it comes to the bigger question. Could there be extraterrestrials out there somewhere? Would our faith be intact if there were? I think it would be intact, and we don't need to fear uh, some of these connections that have been made to this issue. Demons, the whole question of it undermines you know, Jesus' atonement, it endorses evolution, again, it, it, it harms the Bible in some way. These things are not legitimate fears. And so we need to sort of unpack why that's the case and how to think a little bit better as Christians about this issue because, hey, somewhere down the road, we might actually find out that there is life elsewhere, and our faith doesn't need to crumble. It can be quite intact if that's the case.